Hi friends, today we're talking about temptation. We're going to talk about uh, what is temptation, how did Jesus deal with temptation, and what can we do about it. Hi friends, I'm Miss Nancy Ruth. And I'm Mr. Roger. We want to see kids living for Jesus. This is part of Bible Drill Green Cycle. For more information, check out the description below. All right, let's get started with what is temptation? Temptation is the desire or the want to do something that uh, disobeys God or is against what God says to do. It could be a thought in your head like, ooh, but that sounds really good. Um, I think of like a jar of cookies sitting on the counter. And if my mom told me I could only have one, if I take one, and she's not around, I might have the desire to want to go and take like three or four more, but I know that's wrong. Okay. So the temptation is the desire. And what we do after that point is whether or not we sin or not. The desire, the temptation itself is not a sin. It's the action afterward that is the sin. So um, we know that Jesus was tempted just like us. We see that in Hebrews 4.15. And there's a way out of temptation. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. But first, let's talk about the temptation of Jesus. The temptation of Jesus is found in Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. Um, so in our memory device here, this is our little character we have for Matthew. I'm going to show you how we got that character. So Matthew was one of the 12 apostles, and we have a video about that, and you can see that up in the corner. Um, but it's in the book of Matthew, chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. So to find that in your Bible, here's what you got to do. Um, I open my Bible as close to the middle as I can, and I am either usually in Psalm or Proverbs. I'm in Esther this time. I didn't get quite in the middle. That's a little bit before that. Um, and then you take the right half, and you open that as close to the middle as you can right about there. Oh, I didn't quite go far enough. I'm in Daniel. Let me try this right side up, see if that works better. Usually, if you open your Bible in the middle, you're in Psalms or Proverbs or something close to it. And then if you open the right half in the middle, you're in either the Minor Prophets, which is where I am, or in the Gospels. And the Minor Prophets come right before the Gospels, so you just have to turn a few pages past the Minor Prophets till you get to the Gospels. The Gospels are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew is the first one. So here I'm in the book of Matthew. And then the big numbers are the chapters. So I'm going to look for chapter 4. And then verses 1 through 11 is right here at the beginning all the way through verse 11. That's where you find the story of the temptation of Jesus. All right. Let's look at some of what this is. So um, where this took place, this took place in Israel. There's a place in Israel that is south of the Dead Sea, a place called the Araba, or the Ar I think that's how you say it, the Araba. Um, and it's this wilderness area south of the Dead Sea. Um, and this is what it looks like. So when Jesus started his public ministry, just before he started it, he spent 40 days and 40 nights in this wilderness not eating. He was fasting. So that means he had no food. So at the end of those 40 days, the man was hungry. Oh my goodness, I would be so hungry. And that's when Satan came to tempt him. And he came and he t um, said, oh, you're hungry, are you? Why don't you just turn one of these stones into bread and then you can have something to eat? Jesus said, no, no. Um, he knew this was a temptation and he quoted scripture back to Satan. And he said, no, um, people need more than just food to survive. They need the word of God. All right. Well, that didn't work. So Satan took him up to the highest point of the temple, which was about 20 stories high. And he said, well, Jesus, why don't you just, you know, throw yourself off and, and you know, jump off this um, high point. And um, the Bible says, since you like to quote the Bible, the Bible says that G God will send his angels so that you will not get hurt. <laughs> so go, go prove it. Show me. Well, Jesus said, no, no. <laughs> the Bible also says, don't test the Lord your God. So that didn't work either. Then Satan took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world. And he said, um, all of this can be yours, Jesus, if you just bow down and worship me. See, now here's the thing. God was going to put all of the kingdoms of the earth under Jesus' control, under his feet. And Satan says, well, you don't have to wait. Just do it now. You can have it now if you bow down and worship me. And God said, or Jesus said, nope, get away from me, Satan, <laughs> because you worship only the Lord your God. 
And we have a video about that too. So uh, look for that link and then also at the end of this video. All right, so Jesus was tempted like we are. Is there a way out of temptation? Yes, there is. This is one of my favorite verses. It's 1 Corinthians 10, 13. And it says, um, everyone is tempted. Everybody who has ever lived has faced temptation. Nothing we're tempted to do is different than other people. <laughs> okay. Um, we all have different areas where we're weaker, but we all face the same kind of intensity of temptation. But God promises in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, along with the temptation, God will provide a way out, a way out of the temptation, a way to still obey God, even in the face of temptation, just like Jesus did. So we have to look for that way out. So next time you're tempted, remember the temptation is the desire to do it and you still have a choice to make. Are you going to sin or are you going to follow the Lord? Look for that way out of temptation. Um, for more information about some ways to do that, check out this video on the sin alarm. Uh, thanks for joining me, friends. I'll see you next time. Thanks for listening. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share this with your friends. See you next time.